Matthew chapter, the first chapter, verse 18 through 23. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And once you get there, you can stand for the reading of God's word. If you're not able to, we understand. Amen. You gotta see what the Lord has to say this morning. Now, are we there? Okay, amen. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise when, as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God is with us. Yes. Amen? Yes. God's word is already blessed. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I want to talk from the title this morning, Emmanuel, God is with us. Amen? Yes. Amen. You know, Christmas morning for many families is an exciting time, especially for the children. They uh, have a great expectation or uh, anticipation of gifts that are under the tree for them, you know? And um, they can't wait until that time comes to open up those gifts. And, you know, we spend much time emphasizing on getting the perfect gift for our loved ones. I remember, you know, when my three sons were young, I wrapped their gifts in three different color wrapping papers. So it was clear on Christmas morning which gift belonged to whom. And my youngest son, he was so excited, you know, he just ripped off all of uh, those, that paper because his, his color was green. So he just ran through and ripped up all of the paper off the gifts and he was just, uh, you know, so excited. He just went right through it. And then when it was, it was no more gifts, he said, more green paper! <laughs> As he anticipated something greater was coming. But you know, that made it clear to me, the greatest gift is not under the Christmas tree. <laughs> the novelty of uh, gifts wear off very quickly. But there is a gift uh, that just keeps on giving. Amen? And that's Jesus Christ. He just keeps on giving. Amen? Jesus, he came to forgive us of our sins. He came to give us salvation. He came to give us, even this morning, right now, he's given us life. He's given us health. He's given us strength. Isn't he worthy to be praised? Some people say, I don't feel Christmassy because things are not, may not be going their way or, you know, they may have lost a loved one, their financial situation may have changed for the worse, but I want you to hold on this morning. Hold on and look up and know that God is with you and that he loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And then he loves you so much that he said nothing shall separate you from the love of God. So I want you to embrace the greatest gift that you could ever get. Uh, that's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Emmanuel, God is with us. When people change, when people leave us, or, or, or you know, or things are wrong, just know that God sent his son Jesus and he brings us comfort he, he brings us peace he brings us joy and we know that we're not alone 
He is in our present day circumstances. So he's not a distant God. He's not a God who's not concerned about your situation. No, he's in it with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. The scripture was fulfilled in Isaiah. Uh, the, uh, it was chapter 7, the 14th verse. God announced it through Isaiah over 700 years in advance that the Messiah would be born. Amen? Yes. He said that he would come through a virgin. A child would be born and his name would be Emmanuel. God is with us. This prophecy came to pass. And at the time of Jesus' birth in Israel, they were awaiting a Messiah, a king. You know, they were waiting for somebody that would rescue them from their Roman oppression so they could gain uh, more power and that they could establish their kingdom. But God had a greater purpose. His pur purpose wasn't an earthly kingdom, but a heavenly kingdom. Don't you know that God has a greater purpose for your life? Amen. Amen. And he used... He used Mary. He used Mary, uh, a virgin young girl. He used Mary to be the mother of Jesus while, while she was engaged to Joseph. Amen? And you know, engagements meant something different than what they mean today. Uh, it was their custom when you were engaged. It was announced. Everybody knew that you were engaged. The parents had to consent to it. It was a sacred commitment that could only be broken by death or divorce. So during, it was during that time, Mary and Joseph, they did not come together and any sexual union is not like we do today. You know, I got to see what I'm going to get before. No, 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 no. This was a commitment, a sacred union. Amen. Mary, she was an ordinary young girl, but she was devoted to God. And you know, that just goes to show God can use anyone. You know, you don't have to be an internet sensation. You don't have to be popular. You don't have to be wealthy for the Lord to use you. You just have to be available. Amen? You have to be available and have an open heart. Amen? She knew that God was with her. And you know what? When we know that God is with us, we have the confidence to do whatever he calls us to do. Amen? We have the confidence in knowing that I can complete whatever assignment that the Lord tells me to do because I know that he's not telling me to do this alone. He's not telling me to do this in my own power. He's telling me just to submit to his will. Amen? In Luke chapter 1, the angel Gabriel came to Mary to, talk, to tell her that she would conceive a child by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, you know, this child would be without any trace of sin. Amen? And that's a good thing for us because he was the perfect sacrifice for our sin because he came into this world with no sin. Yes, he is the word that became flesh that dwelt among us. Amen? Amen. So when that angel came to tell Mary that she would conceive a child by the Holy Spirit, Mary, she didn't, she didn't doubt so much, but she had faith. She just asked him, how shall this be since I know not a man? She just wanted to know it's okay, you know, to ask questions. God, the Lord, he could handle our questions. Amen? She just wanted to know, how is this going to happen? You know, since I don't know a man. And you know what? They, the angel answered her. She, he said, when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, huh? and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you, then that's what's going to happen. You know what? Sometimes in our lives, we believe in things, and people say, how is this going to happen for you? what the angel even encouraged her. He said, even Elizabeth, your relative at this time, is, has already uh, conceived a child. And, her, and she was barren. She was old. But even in her old age, the Lord answered her prayer. And she was already in her six months. So he was telling her, look what I can do. Look what I can do. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in her old age. And you know what he said? For nothing will be impossible with God. Amen. Nothing. And God, he's still performing miracles today. Amen. Even though it may seem like the odds are stacked against you, it may seem like the problem will never end, but I want you to keep on believing. I want you to keep on trusting. Yeah. 
she said to the angel, she said, I'm, the bond, I'm a bond slave to the Lord. May it be unto me according to your word. Amen. She said, I'm your servant. I, you can do, like, it makes, I'm open to you. Do what you will with me. Amen. She responded in faith. Hallelujah. She didn't respond in fear because fear will stop you from getting the blessings that God has already for you. Amen. Because we're wondering why and how and all of this stuff. No, I'm submitting to your will. Amen. I was reading about a boy who took, uh, took a flight. It was three children. A mother uh, took a flight with her three children and they were on the plane and, and everything and turbulence came. Turbulence came and the plane started shaking and dropping and people were panicking and everything and uh, you know this one boy he just sat very still on the plane and he was very calm so when they landed, they finally landed, a, a woman came to the boy and said, you know, why, why, how were you so calm? He said, well, I had nothing to fear because my father's the pilot. Amen. He said, I had nothing to fear. He had confidence in God and his father. And we ought to have confidence in our father. Amen. He can do only what he can do. And he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask for or think. Yes, yes, yes. So Mary, she got to do something that no one else did. Amen. 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 She delivered a child yeah. that soon would deliver her yeah. and soon would deliver the world. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We have to trust God with the details of our lives. For yeah. we know Jeremiah 29 and 11. Yeah. The Lord said, I know the plan that I have for you, saith the Lord. And the plan is not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. Amen. So Mary and Joseph, they had faith and they trusted in God's leading, the Holy Spirit's leading, even in unexpected times and uncertain times. You know, they, they, they believed in God and Mary trusted in him. And you know what? As a mother, you know, we have to trust the Lord. Even, you know, when we conceive a child, we we have these dreams and we have these hopes for the, uh, for the child. Anticipation of the joy that this child would bring. Amen? Amen? And I'm sure that she never imagined that her son would be betrayed. The son of God would be betrayed and it would be crucified and be rejected. She had no idea that all of these things were going to happen. But you know, God is with us. He's with us in the joy. He's with us in the pain. He's with us every aspect of our lives. He's with us. Amen? And, you know, when she conceived, she just went with God. Amen. And you know what? God, sometimes he wants us to come out of our comfort zone. Amen? He may ask us to do something out of our comfort zone, but we have to say yes to him. Amen. The Lord, he's looking for our yes this morning. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you know what? Joseph, she didn't say, oh, what if Joseph doesn't believe me? She didn't, uh, she put everything aside. Amen. And that's what we have to do. You know, we are blessed people. We have every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So we have the power to do God's will. And I don't know about you, I want to be in the will of God. Isn't that the safest place that you want to be? Amen. God gave her the grace to do what she needs to do. And she was blessed. And she was favored by God. And we are all favored by God. Amen? Amen. Can you imagine her being in this predicament where you have to tell your, your, your uh, fiancé, I'm pregnant with the, by the Holy Ghost? Who is the Father? God. Amen? He was divine. But you know what? Even Joseph, he had a great intent. Even though he didn't understand everything that was going on, he wanted to put her away privately. He had, he loved God. He wanted to do what pleased God. And there's so many of us sometimes, I don't want to say us, uh, I want to say the world, the society are so quick to point out someone's faults, amen, without even knowing the full story. We take to social media to tell somebody someone else's faults instead of looking and protecting the 
that person. Instead of love protects, love covers, amen? But we're so ready to expose someone. But no, he wanted to put her away privately because he couldn't imagine, you know, she had to do something that he couldn't even understand, amen? But you know what? When you're favored by God, God will speak on your behalf. You don't have to say a word. You don't have to worry about how to figure it out or anything else. What happened? What, what happened? The angel came. The angel in his sleep. The angel had to come to him and to tell him what's going on. And that's what God will do when you're favored by God. God will speak to another person on your behalf. You don't even have to say it. So we don't 